Hello everybody, how are you all doing today? Obviously, you've seen from the title, we're reacting to the next one, the next uh, Japaniku 2017 video, which is... I don't know which episode it is anymore, but it's the one with the title Rain and Melon Soda. So another one in Tokyo. I think there are three more videos of me in Tokyo for the first time, and then we're moving on to Osaka. So it's gonna get maybe a little more interesting. Nothing against Tokyo, but I remember the last few days being very rainy and just feeling a little bit stuck. So I'm gonna be reacting to that episode today. It's quite a long one, and honestly, I don't remember anything <laughs> that happens in the episode, like, at all. Melon soda? Maybe I went to that sushi place, the rotating, revolving sushi place for the first time. Maybe, I think that was the only time I've ever had melon soda in Japan. Looking at both seasons of Japaniku, calling them seasons, we're being fancy here. I wonder which one is gonna happen first, me finishing reacting to all the Japaniku episodes or the borders reopening in Japan. I'm hoping it's the Japanese borders first. What about you guys? I have a feeling you'd prefer that one too. Don't get me wrong, it's fun reacting to past videos, but I would much rather be in the present. And my present is supposed to be in Japan. As usual, please share Education is Not Tourism through the hashtag, by visiting the website, sharing the interviews that have been given uh, via, I don't know, Davide Rossi on YouTube, NHK, there's a whole bunch of articles online and it would really, really help if you could share them, have as much people read them and be aware of us international students stranded without any communication from the government. It would be really useful for other people to realize that this is happening, this is going on, and um, to talk about it, just keep talking about it until it falls into the ears of the right people. Right now we're hoping that October is the next date, possible entry date for us to go to Japan at the end of the Olympics. That's what we're hoping and that is why we need to keep pushing. Yeah, serious stuff out of the way. Now it's time for me to try and figure out which one of these is left, which one of these is right. Um, Mami Iku, and I'll be the right one. Yay! Okay, I am in my little capsule. <laughs> Where I'm technically not allowed to film, I don't think, but... Episode 6 It's very busy here And uh, yeah, I'm not gonna keep you too long just wanted to introduce you okay? Right now I'm in Shinjuku and I'm going to go to Isetan And then I'm going to visit some shrines And later in the day I'm going to go Finally gonna go to Shibuya I don't want to bang my head on the low sign But as you can see the ceiling is pretty low here So the name of the shrine I'm going to is Hanazama Shrine Today there is a flea market, so if I find that That's when the flea market happened. And right now I'm looking for exit E2. I should be paying more attention. Otherwise I'm gonna get lost. <laughs> uh, that way. I'm good. I just bought two little sweets and then I got out of there because I saw sushi boxes and bento boxes and everything that was so, so amazing. So and another thing, while I'm here, um Check your exits when you're going to anywhere in Tokyo. And as you can see, I've been walking for a while now, and if I didn't know where the exit was, I would have just been lost. Little parenthesis about that part, because there was a lot of information but not much to see. I went to Isetan. The only reason I went to Isetan is because I saw Taylor Art talk about it. So I wanted to check it out. I didn't really know, uh, I don't think I'd seen any proper like department stores before that moment. So it was my first experience and obviously Isetan is kind of one of the more fancier ones. I think it's in Shinjuku uh, and it's also clearly my first encounter with the Debachika I think that's how you say it which is usually like on the basement floor I mentioned ground floor bread I think I do mean basement could be wrong uh, like below the shopping mall like the department store 
there's usually a huge area for like foods usually like nice luxury food like properly packed and designed and it's it's always a lot it's always super overwhelming you want to buy everything it's kind of on the pricey side and obviously i say something that i've i will continue saying is know your exits obviously here i'm in shinjuku station it's a massive massive station like you can go in multiple directions and be underground for a very very long time like we've seen in one of the previous episodes so know your exits i mean know where you're going and then figure out your exit with the big map thing and um that way you won't get lost because that's definitely something that happens a lot uh looks like i'm at the shrine now but if my memory serves me well because of the rain um that's been going on for quite a few days the market itself was kind of like mm. So he can't even see it behind me. Okay, it's gonna rain, so look, look well, look fast. Yeah, <laughs> this is Hanazono Shrine, and there's a flea market today. Let's look at this little flea market. Actually, there are more stalls from what I remember, but it was just kind of sad, you know, like. I feel like flea markets are like when it's sunny obviously like animated and lots of people and noise and stuff it was just quiet it was, mm. I wonder if I can get to see another Japanese flea market if it will be the same atmosphere if it's just typically quiet <laughs> this rain <sighs> where am I going now? Yeah, since yesterday's garden was such a success, I thought I'd try this one. But with the weather, I'm afraid I'll just get ruined. After this, I'll probably go to Shibuya anyway, so let's do this. Yeah, that was fun. I definitely remember it. Yeah, I think the second time was a bit in that one where I got some... I think it was mochi. It might have this been that one. This is what I'm gonna have to cross. I really don't want to have watches for the rest of the day. Oh, I want to get on that bridge. And I paid my entry, forgotten. so... <laughs> I've forgotten the wet shoes! Oh no... Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> and swing okay this time maybe that way again narrating literally <laughs> everything i'm doing <laughs> made it oh, no. you. yes at least you can get this view I know it's just conveyor belt sushi, but it's a, it's still an experience. Uyobe sushi. I have to remember that one because I keep ending up at this completely other one. After that, like in 2019, I go to this completely different one and it wasn't as good. This one was good. Uyobe sushi. Oh, I don't think And then I got the melon soda. Okay, hang on, hang on. There's something I remember exactly from this. Oh, look how many foreigners there are. So many, so many. Okay. What do I remember? First of all, I remember waiting for a really long time to get a seat because of the rain. There are like a line of people like just zigzagging inside. Uh, what else do I remember? There was another foreign girl behind me and obviously the lady thought that we were going to eat together but no, we were just two lonely people. I guess with hindsight we should have just like 
became friends for just that reason but I don't know I was younger then and I like my alone time anyway so one thing I do remember and I mean it's stupid but it's still like engraved in my mind like you can see right there behind me not behind me like next to me on my left there is a foreign woman with kids and they left before me and one of the kids let out like the loudest burp like probably the entire restaurant heard it like it was loud and the mom was so embarrassed she was mortified by her kid like just straight up burping it wasn't like this little polite burp it was like legit this <laughs> i think right there i'm at shibuya 109 like one of the little exits a little higher up exit I've never been like next to Hachiko, I don't think. There's always a crowd of people. <laughs> I always cheat. <laughs> Too many people! Is that the crossing? Yeah, that's the crossing. Okay, Ika's first time, well, second time technically, because I already crossed it once. On the scramble crossing, look at all the people. Honestly, crossing with all the people and their umbrellas is just... It's just no. Oh, I'm so shy and self-conscious. Still am, but not... I think I'd be more relaxed. <laughs> umbrellas oh there's a fly go away fly don't want you here okay um meiji shrine that's that's in harajuku so definitely skipped over a bunch of things there um probably things that i was too embarrassed to mention that i remember really clearly <laughs> okay let's trace our steps back actually went to shibuya 109 uh, what do I remember? I don't remember actually being like brave enough to go inside the stores. I think also that in my mind I'm like, oh, I'm too tall to even bother. Also, I didn't really go there to shop for clothes. And I don't remember the fur thing. Like I did mention that the fashion at that point was at that time was like a lot of faux fur and stuff. That would not would not have been me anyway. But it is the first time that I noticed because before that I went to Sunshine City. I did go to the mall before because I went to Sunshine City. Um, <laughs> I went to Sunshine City before and looking at the clothes there, they were much more plain than the fashion obviously in Shibuya in Shibuya 109 which was like very colorful and uh, frilly and then the faux fur that I mentioned. So I don't remember much of Shibuya 109, not gonna lie. Then I go to the um, Scramble Crossing where I remember crossing it a bunch of times just to get the experience though rain umbrellas like all the umbrellas it's just a lot in the rain it was just a lot of light and I do remember wanting to find a spot so I could appreciate the view but it just didn't work out it was Sunday it was raining it was, it was just overcrowded but luckily if you go to the 2019 series I do go to the uh, Starbucks quite early a few times just to get a place to watch the people and time lapses and everything galore to do with Shibuya Crossing. I saw Hachiko for the first time. It is something that you kind of have to see. It is like a rite of passage. I've never um, taken the time to queue to get a photo. One thing that I mentioned earlier but I didn't film and then I didn't mention 
doing it afterwards probably because of how embarrassed of the whole thing I was is going to Piru Purika Puri Purikura <laughs> Purika? Purikura no Meka which is a um, like photo booth thing but like the Japanese photo booths if you don't know like you can kind of make them go really crazy and give yourself big eyes and all the kind of thing but you're supposed to do it with your friends and not like go alone but I wanted to do it I wanted the experience so I went to Purika Puri, why can't I say it Purikura <laughs> no Meka um, don't know if it still exists uh, <laughs> and the obvious <laughs> and um the staff had to help me for literally everything from like changing the money to explaining how the machine worked and then when you take your photos afterwards you can draw on them and then he had to show me and obviously there were like all the photos of me with all the big eyes and stuff it was just really really embarrassing but I still have the photos somewhere <laughs> it's still something the fact that I still have those sticker photos <laughs> oh my god um, <laughs> it was just really embarrassing I think it was the, the maybe the first time I think in that trip where I was like why am I traveling alone love it don't get me wrong it's like a fantastic experience but <laughs> why did I do that alone I would not do that alone again no okay Dreams. We love the dream. Excuse me. Where am I? So I don't remember much about this area. I think I've gone to it quite a few times, but none of the shops interest me. But I think I get takoyaki for the first time, and obviously it was piping hot. <laughs> they weren't as good as I'd hoped. The Osaka ones were so much better. There's no eating a takoyaki fast, girl. So clearly my ba uh, camera battery ran out and I couldn't tell you what I did next. Um, I went to uh, the onsen I keep recommending in Asakusa probably in Tokyo uh, because they accept tattoos and it looks like a sento but I believe it's m like onsen water or something like that don't remember the name you'll have to like go to one of my previous episodes um, what do I remember from my first onsen experience? I was so stressed out, yo, because obviously you're naked in front of everyone and you're not used to it, in, definitely in my culture not used to like just taking bath, a bath with everyone, like washing yourself in front of everyone but the first thing of... Uh, I couldn't figure out how to buy the tickets on the ticket machine and I felt so dumb so in that particular onsen, like sento, whatever you want to call it sento onsen thing go in, take off your shoes, put it in the little locker and then buy your tickets from the ticket machine like do you want a towel, do you want some soap, do you just want a ticket to enter the onsen you just get your little tickets and pay and then you go to the reception which is inside the thing and then they give you what you pay for and then you go to the changing room uh, drop, a, take off all of your clothes and then you go wash yourself in the shower area and then you go into the bath, the hot water thing I think that's like a very rough resume <laughs> of what it's supposed to be but I messed up at the start like not really messed up but for the life of me I couldn't figure out how to get the tickets and that's because I was on a European brain thing where usually like you place your order and then the machine tells you how much you have to pay and then you put the money in but if I remember correctly in that thing you had to put your money in first and then choose the thing and that got me so many times for some reason like I couldn't switch my brain that they want the money first so tip if that like if you have the same kind of brain fart put the money first don't like I was just pressing the buttons like a moron and then had to waddle up to the desk like a stupid foreigner which is like the feeling that I try to avoid at all costs and be like 
how how does the machine work and then you would just like put the money in it <laughs> but other than that that's a lot like of embarrassing experiences for one day like the purikura thing and then the onsen machine thing onsen machine sounds kind of funny actually um other than that the onsen experience in itself was really really good i really enjoyed it and the fact is is that i returned to the center like so many times after that because it was accessible in asakusa and tattoo friendly and just clean and it's just nice it's just really nice and there are a lot of Japanese people there and it's kind of embarrassing at first because you feel like you're just gonna do something wrong and you can't really figure things out but as long as you don't do like any deadly mistakes like go into the hot water without washing your body first if I can really compromise the quality of the water there I don't think you can do any major mistakes I hope these are like maybe pearls of wisdom if you've never been to japan and you don't know much about it thank you so much for watching guys see you in the next one uh two more episodes in tokyo then i go to osaka and from osaka i do a lot of different areas like kyoto and nara and some hiking in the mountains which i'm really looking forward to seeing again and then from there i go to hiroshima and you know like the trip just continues and like i said i wonder whether i'll finish all the episodes first or I'll be in Japan. Anyway, thank you again for still being there on this kind of dead channel. Hopefully we can revive it once we're in Japan. And I uh, hope you're well. See you all. Keep safe. Chin up. Let's do our best. And if you just can't today, make yourself a burrito blanket and take care of yourself. Au revoir, you well.